Hey all folks and welcome to Son of Dell's live vlog on this the 25th of April. I know it's been a while since I've done a vlog, over two weeks now. Obviously uh, Easter was in the middle so that was one reason I didn't do one but then um, I was ill. I uh, lost my voice, I had a really sore throat. Um, I had all the signs of Covid to be honest. I didn't have Covid, I'm thankful to say, touch wood. But I'm still, as you can hear, I'm still a little bit bunged up and I still can't um, speak properly. Uh, Coming up on tonight's vlog, I've got a couple of jigsaws which I've done to show you. A very disappointing monthly subscription jigsaw, which I've, I've now cancelled, which I'll explain in a bit. Uh, I've also got a fantastic three book haul, what I did from the works. I managed to get three Graham Masterton horror novels for £5, brand new. Uh, and them are coming up later on. I'll also just be talking about stuff that I've been doing within the last 10 or 15 days. Uh, anyway, coming up first, I'll do the unboxing of the very disappointing annual uh, subscription for me jigsaw. Right, here we go. Now, the thing is about my subscription when I, when I joined, I went on to the um, All Jigsaw Puzzles website and they have loads of cartoon jigsaws on there and I love cartoon jigsaws. I don't mean cartoon like Bugs Bunny or nothing like that. I mean animated what somebody's drawn cartoon. And I was hoping, uh, bear in mind, I've had December's, January's, February's, March and April. I've had five and there's only been one jigsaw that's been really good and that was the 1950s American Diner one. I really like that one. That was really nice. Even though it was quite plain, I do like the fact that they use pastel colours in it and everything. Now this month's jigsaw, I'm really disappointed with to be honest. Because you know last time I got um, the library one and that was quite a bit boring to some people. Which, you know, I'll do it but it's not one of my favourites. But then they sent me this and this is this month's. And I don't actually, I don't think that it, I'm getting really, you know, decent jigsaws. All right, some people might like that, the flower shop. But if they looked at my history of the jigsaws I bought, I don't buy these sort of jigsaws. And when you have a subscription, I think it's best if they actually look at your, your purchase history, if you've got one, and I have got one on there. And all the jigsaws I've ever bought have been animated. Um, so I've cancelled, to be honest, I've cancelled, I'm very disappointed. I paid for five months, so that's like £60, and I've just got really, really boring jigsaws, except for one. Now, what I am doing is I'm also, um, I will be joining the Gibsons, Gibsons Jigsaws do some fantastic jigsaws. I've had some great jigsaws off them over the years. My mum used to have a lot of Gibsons, and they do really lovely jigsaws. They do their own jigsaws, and... Um, the thing is about Gibsons, they're not about doing a subscription service. Now, they haven't started it yet. They're just seeing if they can get people interested. And I put my name down because, yes, you'll be paying £16. But if you look at the quality of their jigsaws and you look at the different... Uh, if you go on to gibsongames.com, you'll see them. Uh, .co.uk, sorry. Uh, you'll see them. They have some absolutely amazing jigsaws on there. And, and I wouldn't be disappointed with any of the jigsaws off there because they all look as if they're quite quality. Because they'll only send their own jigsaws, you see, which is fair enough, I can understand that, because it's a Gibson subscription service, so they only sell Gibson's jigsaws. Whereas all jigsaw puzzles, you see, it's one of those places that has different brands on it. So really, it can just... These are, these are their own brand, as you can tell by the boxes, you wouldn't get these anywhere else. But I just think they're a bit boring, I really do. I'm very, very disappointed, to be honest. I was hoping to get some real cool, cartoony, animated ones, at least one every two or three months. And I've done five now, and I've just got bored with them, to be honest with you. I haven't done any of them yet. Not one of them. <clears throat> now...
Now, as you can see from them puzzles, Joe, I have done shaped puzzles. But unfortunately, when I did the dragon one, it had a piece messing out the middle. Uh, I got in touch with them and Craft Hub were absolutely fantastic with me. They said, you know, I sent them pictures showing that the piece was messing. And they sent me a, an email saying, you know, we can send you another one. What do you want? Do you want a replacement or do you want a refund? And I was like, no, I want a replacement. I said, I want the exact same jigsaw. I said, I just want that piece out the middle. So I thought that they would send me just the one piece out the middle. But I've been onto my uh, orders and it looks like they're sending me all four puzzles again because I ordered four. Um, a giraffe. I mean, I mean, let me get this right. The giraffe one you've just seen, the dragon one you've seen, the moonlight one, which I was an absolute nightmare to do, but I, I was determined to do it. And if you see how tiny the pieces are, some of them are smaller than my fingernail. That's how small some of the pieces are. But I did it, I persevered with it, and I did it. And the fourth one is a brilliant one. It's another round one, like the moon one, but this one's yin and yang, you know, from like Chinese. Uh, mythology or whatever it is the yin and yang symbol you know the good the bad the the, the light the dark etc etc and it's a really lovely jigsaw but i'm not doing it yet because i'm outdone now with these little tiny jigsaws because my fingers when i'd finished doing that one I, I, yes i was absolutely chuffed to bits with myself you know i give myself a massive pat on the back because if you'd have seen the pieces when i first tipped them on the tray you would not have believed it possible that they would have made that round picture that you saw and I was pleased that all the pieces were there because I was dreading there being a piece missing. But yeah, so I am definitely not having any more a full jigsaw puzzle subscription. I might have a couple off the website if I feel like buying them, but I'll buy the animated ones because I like the cartoon ones, as I've just said. Now, um, once I've got my Gibson subscription, you'll know about it and then you'll be able to see me. Uh, I'll be doing the unboxings of that each month as well. But yeah, that's my jigsaws for this month. Yeah, so um, we haven't been doing much the last couple of weeks. Uh, for, for a week or so, we were able to sit outside and uh, we've been just basically chilling out because I've had a bit of um, like brain fog, if you like. I don't know whether it's because I've been ill or what, but my mind's been a bit confused just lately. I've been all over the place. I've been trying to concentrate on things and I just can't do it. So what I've ended up doing is just sitting watching football. I've watched Italian football, French football, I've watched English football, I've watched National League football. I've even started watching some of the Portuguese football that BT Sports have got. Um, but I, I just haven't been able to concentrate or focus on anything. I wanted to start a lot of reading this month with my journal. Because in my journal I put a reading category and I haven't read a page of any books. Now, this could all change, because coming up later in the vlog, you will be able to see my three-book haul of Graham Masterton horror books from the works. Uh, that's coming up a bit later. Now, the other thing is, my family have been quite ill lately. My sister's not too good, Paula. She's having severe pains in her stomach. My other sister, Mandy, has been in bed for a few days because she's been ill. And I've not been brilliant either. Uh, so, you know, it's not been a, a fantastic day. And the funny, th not the funny thing is, the other thing is, Deb hasn't been too good. She's got problems with her hearing. Um, it keeps going and coming back, going and coming back. So she's got to look into that. Next door, the two best friends we've got are Tony and Michelle. Michelle hasn't been very well because her ears have now gone. And Tony's got a really sore throat. So we're all in the wars just lately. I don't know what it is. It must be the time of year. Now, obviously, in the middle of um, my vlogs, uh, between the last one and this one, has been Easter. Now, we don't really celebrate Easter, to be honest with you. We're not one of these who goes out and buys eggs and stuff like that. Or cards, for that matter. I know some people send Easter cards, but I've never sent an Easter card in my life. Well, sorry, when I was a child, I used to do them at school and send them to my mum, obviously. Every, every child does that in, in, in England. <clears throat> but, a few years back, I was a member of something called Hotel Chocolat. Now, Hotel Chocolat is a fantastic, brilliant thing if you love being a connoisseur of chocolates. And I was at the time. And literally, you get a box with all these chocolates in. And they're not the kind of chocolates you go, yum, 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 yum. You wouldn't do that with these chocolates. These are literally exclusive chocolates. There's special flavours in there. There's special blends. There's different kinds of cocoa used. There's, uh, some have got alcohol in them. Some of them haven't. You can choose that when you buy a box. But they, do, they did a subscription, and I had a subscription for about a year. And basically, you get a box a month. Now, bear in mind, there's about 30 chocolates in, so it's like one a day. And you get a card in with them where you basically uh, give them marks out of 10 and tick them and you can go onto the website and rate each chocolate because they are really serious about their chocolate, these people. 
Now, I when when I was a member of these, they gave me they sent me a message just before Easter that they'd got in these new Easter eggs, and uh, I ordered one for my wife, a dark chocolate one, because she loves dark chocolate. I have never seen chocolate so thick in my life. We couldn't get through it. It was like a brick hammer job. You couldn't get through it. The chocolate must have been about two th about that thick all the way around this this Easter egg. The chocolate's in it, lovely, yeah, nice blend of chocolates, different ones and everything. But this Easter egg, I am not kidding you. We tried slamming it on the cupboard and everything. It would not break. It would not break. I can't remember how we broke it in the end. I think I ended up throwing it up in the air and letting it come down and smash it in the foil because it was impossible to break. And when you've got a chunk of it, you couldn't like crack a bit off and have a taste of it. You had to literally smash it to smithereens before you could eat it. And I don't think we got through it all because I don't like dark chocolate. Dark chocolate and me don't get on. I find it too bitter. I'm more a white chocolate or a milk chocolate person. But Deb bless her, she tried to get through this Easter egg and she apologised to me because she said she couldn't get through it all and I was like don't worry about it you know you've got your value out of it i bought it as a one-off you know but oh my word you should have seen how thick this egg was it must have been at least three quarters of an inch to an inch in thickness all the way around not like these ones you buy from the shops where they're that thin you could literally snap them you know ting, as soon as you get hold of it this was a brick thick i'm telling you, you you've never seen nothing like it in your life yeah it was expensive it was about 25 pound but for what you got and the fact that there was chocolates in it as well, their luxury chocolates, and this big egg, and this big egg must have weighed about two and a half kilos, it was bloody everything, it was. But yeah, that's my experience with Easter, so I don't really do Easter eggs. Um, thinking of Easter, actually, I remember when I was a younger uh, child, I used to live in a place called Braidley, and come Easter, we used to go down to a place called Port Vale Market. Now, Port Vale, obviously, is a football club, but it used to have a market in the grounds just outside the football stadium. And we used to go down there a couple of days after Easter because this was before they started putting news by dates on Easter eggs. So, basically, once, an Easter, once Easter had come, all the Easter eggs had to be got rid of. They couldn't keep them to next year. Like, some of them have got a, day, a, year, a year and a half date on them. How do you do that? I don't know. But we used to go down about four days after Easter. So say Good Friday, we'd go down on Bank Holiday Monday and they'd be flogging all the Easter eggs off. So all the ones that were like 199 were 50p and stuff like that. And you'd go home with bags of Easter eggs. You know, they'd last you till about July by the time you'd got them home and, and, and ate them. But they used to be brilliant. You could go down with £2 and come back with about five Easter eggs, you know. Not like now. I mean, I've seen some of the Easter eggs now. They're an absolute rip-off. I mean, for what you get now, whew, God, you lot, today, you don't know how much you're being ripped off, I'm telling you. When I was a kid, an Easter egg was an Easter egg, mate. And when it said it had got something inside it, it wasn't just like two or three jelly tots. It was like a packet and a half of Smarties or something that was absolutely loads of them in there when you opened it. That's the other thing I was thinking of the other day. You remember, well, you won't, I don't know if you're the same age as me. But when I was little, um, when I used to get boxes of cereal... And things like cigarettes. My mum used to do cigarettes and all that sort of stuff. But we used to get things in them. Now, I used to collect these cards what were in cigarettes. They were like um, little information cards. And they had guns from all the ages. So you got started off like with a flintlock pistol. And then there was a Sten gun. There was loads of different ones. And I had them. But the cereal, <clears throat> they wouldn't do it nowadays, I don't think. They'd go health and safety. would go mental. You used to literally have a bag of cereal. And you would root through the cereal to try and find the toy that was in there. It could be a little action figure or a little smurf or whatever. And it would be in there. And you would literally tip the box out in order to get to this one thing. And then maybe not even have the cereal, you know. <laughs> and nowadays, you know, now you've got to send off for things. There's nothing that's free in them no more. Because people complained, you see. Because people were having a bowl of cereal and choking on these things. <clears throat> well, I'm thinking, well... If you look on the box and it says there's something in with the cereal, you don't just put a big bag full in your, in your bowl and put milk on them and uh, eat them and think, oh, it won't be in this, because you don't know what's in there. I mean, they started putting them in little plastic bags as well, which I thought was kind of weird, because you've got plastic toy in a plastic bag. And in this day and age, that's something you do not want. Too much plastic, you do not want that. But yeah, how things have changed. Now, the other day, we had a bit of a, a strange one. I had a box about... This, this big, I'll just come back a little bit, this big, and about this deep, and about that wide, right? And it came just like that, and it was from Amazon, like that. 
and we opened it up and there was tons of packaging in there and I'm talking loads of paper that's just been folded up and put in and there was one book in it one ordinary reading book right now go forward a couple few days and we did an order from um, I've got that right, the works not the works sorry I'm sorry my, my goof I shouldn't have said that not the works the other one Welco's we did an order from Welco's from garden stuff and my wife ordered two 40 litre bags of soil and she also ordered a um, plant some planters some ones like that troughs and a couple of round ones they decided in their infinite wisdom to send the two litre bags the two 40 litre bags of soil in with one of the uh, plastic planters this is what turned up as you can see the state of these is absolutely disgusting now we got in touch with them because not only had they put this in and it got damaged but they'd also missed an item off the list as well I got in touch with them to give them all the photos etc now they have sent us the replacement item for the one that was not shipped which was a 20 centimeter pot or 19 centimeter whatever the one that's damaged the 30 centimeter one they haven't seemed to have done anything with I've sent them the pictures but they are they just sort of like haven't got back to me about it at all so if I haven't heard them by tomorrow I'm going to get in touch with them because there's no way I don't know how the other, the other thing about this parcel, by the way, when I'm saying I had 240 litre, and th there was no packaging in it whatsoever. So we went from one extreme to the other. A box this big with umpteen ton of packaging in for a book, and then a proper box full of soil and planters with no packaging in whatsoever. There was no chips in there, there was no bubble wrap in there, there was nothing. So, of course, this soil had obviously fell on the planter and completely smashed it to smithereens. So who in the right mind actually sent it out like that, I have no idea. I wouldn't want them uh, working for a firm of mine, I tell you. So yeah, it's been a bit of a, like a quiet day, a quiet couple of weeks. Um, but obviously with everybody being ill, we've not really been doing much. I managed to go uh, shopping last week, and the one thing I will say is, I went in to B&M, and I went into Aldi. And the way that the prices have gone up has absolutely shocked me to my core. I cannot believe things we used to buy for a pound are now 120, 130. Things we used to buy for 160 are now two quid. And you've got this brilliant thing, I've got to tell you about this in B&M. It's absolutely fantastic. They've imported a load of chocolate bars from Australia, right? Different flavoured ones. And they were doing individual Mars bars, which were about that big, right? And they're raspberry flavour, limited edition from Australia. £1.69 each bar. Now, my sister thought they were in packs of three. And she looked at me and she said, it's a pity they're not in single bars because I might have tried one. And I picked one up and I said, they are in single bars. It's £1.69 for one. And we couldn't believe it. It was just a normal size Mars bar, about like that it was. Nothing major. £1.69. And they had some others there as well. They had a um, a dairy milk, but it had got um, caramel chunks in it or something, and that was imported from Australia as well. And whereas a normal dairy milk would cost you one fifty, this was three pounds for the same size bar. And I'm thinking, well, if you're going to import them, at least give us a, a good chance of buying them at a reasonable price. I mean, I'm not going to fork out three quid on a bottle of chocolate. Go oh, blimey, three quid on a loaf of bread and a bottle of milk. As you know, thank you very much. And with how prices are going at the moment, I think some people will have a choice soon, either heat their house or eat. They've got two choices. But of course, we're, we're well looked after, because we've got the government, haven't we? We've got the Conservative government. They'll look after us. They'll look after us. Excuse me a minute. Anyway, I'll just quickly show you the new books, what I've had. These are the three Graham Masterton books from The Works, and they only cost £5 for three brand new books. So, yeah, I've got three Graham Masterton books for £5, and I'll just show them you now. The first one is called The Plague, as you can see, The Plague. And it says, a deadly disease, ring a bell, no cure, anyone who leaves the plague zone must be shot. 
At first, the rules were simple. Quarantine the city and let the plague die. So men and women closed their doors and lived in lockdown. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? Fighting for survival against a disease and contagious and destructive as a black death, a disease for which there was no known cure. But the plague did not die. And so at lunchtime on a Friday afternoon, the president announces the new rules. Every American should take up arms to protect the disease-free zones. Anyone attempting to leave the plague zone must be shot. That's a horror. That's one. The second one, Graham Masterton, obviously, the walkers. An idyllic retreat or a madhouse soaked in blood, only the walkers can tell you. The Oaks is an idyllic upmarket country club, but its ornately carved walls hide a horrific past. Sixty years ago, the house was an asylum, home to crazed psychopaths. One night, all of them disappeared, never to be seen again. Jack Reed, the owner of the Oaks, has no idea about the building's terrible history. It's only when Jack's son is dragged into the walls of the mansion he realises what happened 60 years ago and just where the inmates have been living all this time. Third one. Black Angel. In a city wreathed in fog, a satanic killer stalks the streets. Enter Lieutenant Foggia, who, assisted by his spiritualist medium, must discover the reason for the slayings. But the truth he unearths is beyond anything he's encountered in the real world, for the killings are paving the way for a force so powerful the lives of a few innocents seem insignificant in comparison. Packed with twists and laced with spiritualism, witchcraft and demonology, Black Angel moves at a breakneck pace from its stomach-churning opening to the explosive final confrontation between man and demon. Now, if you've never read any Graham Masterton and you like horror, then read Graham Masterton. Stephen King actually has put on the front of him, God, he is good. And that's endorsed by Stephen King. And if you don't know Stephen King, then you shouldn't really be reading horror. Uh, yeah, horror. Um, I have always been a horror fan, and I have grown up reading Stephen King, James Herbert, Sean Hudson, Dean Koontz, Graham Masterton, Richard Lehman, and many, many more. And Graham Masterton is right up there with the best of them. And I've just found out, actually, because I didn't know whether he was actually on Instagram, because I posted a picture of my books on Instagram, and he's actually 76 years old. He's 76 years old. And he's, he's a fantastic author. He really is a fantastic author. His books will churn your stomach, don't get me wrong, because they're a bit, they're a bit gruesome. But you, with it being a book, you use your imagination and... and they're rough, but they are really, really good. He can really get you on the edge of your seat, Graham Masterton can. <clears throat> yeah, so those are the three books I had from the works, and they were three for £5. And if you go onto the works, there are absolutely tons of every genre possible in the three for five. I know because we buy from there all the time, and it's the first, first three for five I've bought for a while. My wife loves all the stuff on there. She buys a lot of the chiclet stuff and the um, a lot of the real life stuff as well. And they're always three for five. Uh, you can't go wrong. I mean, these days, if you look on the back of a book, each book here has got a price tag of nine pound. Nine pound. So you work that out. Nine pound for three books. That's twenty-seven pound, and you're getting them for five. And they're all brand new. They've never been read. They're actually from brand new. So, what do you want for five pound? <laughs> a little bit of information actually um, about my vlog uh, it has been very much um, watched shall we say I've been getting wrong information because I go on to it and I look at the analytics and it shows me that uh, sorry if I go on to each vlog it shows me how many likes it's had underneath and how many watches usually about seven or eight maybe nine watches which is fair enough you know I, I know I won't appeal to everybody but I then clicked on the analytic button and it comes up with how many views I've had in a month. 
And when I clicked on how many views I'd had in a month, instead of it being seven, eight, or nine, or ten per vlog, which would be about 40 a month, there was 830 views. So my vlog was actually getting 20 times more views than I thought it was. Because the information that's underneath your vlog, for some reason, doesn't read true when you go on to the analytics. You look on the analytics and your video has had 830, your channel has had 830 views in a month, <clears throat> in 28 days. Now, I'm not a, obviously, I'm not a, a professional vlogger who makes a fortune out of vlogging or nothing like that. I do it for a hobby. But to think that nearly a thousand people watch my vlog a month is amazing. It's massive for me, that is. That is absolutely massive for me. I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed. I really am. And my Instagram, my Instagram, I only started that off because my wife said to me, why don't you start posting pictures of your Funkos and your jigsaws and stuff on Instagram? So I started and uh, I was like one view, one like, two, three, four, five, no problem. You know, so many subscribers. Then all of a sudden I now go on and I've got 190 followers. <clears throat> And all I do is post pictures of jigsaws, Funko Pops, Liverpool memorabilia, maybe the odd book. Uh, but it shows you, you know, this day and age, it don't, you don't have to be uh, a young person, you don't have to be a fitness fanatic, you don't have to have a body like, you know, a gorgeous woman or a hunky bloke. You can do anything you want if you put your mind to it where vlogging's concerned. Now I know a few people who said, "Oh, you know, I'd like to do a vlog, but I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to go about it." Well, simple as mate, you do exactly what I did. You dip your toe in the water. You know, you, you see, you, you go onto it, you have a look, you think what you want to do, you vlog about, and if you're interested in it, you do it. Don't worry about all the revenue and all this stuff because you're about people earning thousands of pounds off YouTube. I didn't. I don't want to do all that crap. I don't want to. It's too complicated for me. And then I'll have to start monitoring every single video, every single comment, every single. Oh no, it'll be a pain in the backside, and I can't be that bothered with it to be honest with you. Which is why I prefer doing like I do now. I just literally do my own stuff, and then if people want to watch it, they can. If they want, to, if they don't want to watch it, they don't have to. I've had likes. I've had comments. And one of my vlogs, which was my review of my um, laptop, not laptop, yeah, tablet, my Fusion 5 tablet, has had 11,200 views, watches. 11,200. That's an astonishing amount, that is. So I know that if I do product reviews, people will watch them. Because the headset one I did, that got over 5,000 views. Uh, because when I do a view... When I do, sorry, when I do a, um, a test of a product, I don't do the test of the product and just say, oh, it's good because of this, 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 and this, because I'm not getting paid. I don't do that. I buy my own stuff. So I haven't got nobody to impress. If I don't like something, I will point out the bad side about it as well as the good. I don't see the point of me just going, oh, yes, it's absolutely fantastic, wonderful, wonderful tablet, no problems with it whatsoever, great, 100%, yeah. I won't do that. <clears throat> you won't get that from me. As you saw in my last vlog, I did the shaving thing and I've used it three or four times now and it still gets me as smooth as anything. I only did it yesterday and there's a little bit of stub coming back, just a little bit. But it's a really good razor. I'm still saying it's a good razor now. Another thing, very, very quickly before I go, uh, that's happened um, a few weeks back, uh, we were started having problems with the tumble dryer. It started cutting out. And we thought it was the tumble dryer, obviously. It wasn't. It was the sockets. Anyway, the electrician came out. We got in touch with him. The electrician came out. And for some strange reason, in order to test the socket, he plugged our microwave in. And it blew. It blew the microwave. So we have had to go out now and buy a brand new microwave. Now, we're pretty sure that him plugging it in caused it. We're pretty sure of that because it was okay beforehand. But he plugged it into this dodgy socket, and I think it blew the microwave. It literally pff, wouldn't come on, nothing, wouldn't do anything. It wasn't the plug. We checked that. It was the microwave. So we've got a brand new microwave. Now, I got one off Amazon. Uh, it was a Swan one, purple. And it was 69.99. Should have been 99.99. So we thought, yeah, go on, no worries. We ordered it on the Thursday. It's supposed to have been coming on the Friday. Got an email off Amazon. We're really sorry. We've been in sorry from Swan. We've been in. We, 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 we're really sorry. We've been in touch with the courier. It's gone missing en route. As we no longer have any in stock, we've refunded you your money. 
what that says to me is they realised that we wanted it for 69.99. The next day when my wife went on, it was on 94 quid. There's nothing to do with it being lost at all. You just didn't want to sell it at 69.99, Swan. I won't ever buy a Swan product ever again because we were lied to. And I know we were lied to. There's not telling me that a microwave went missing in 24 hours. What in the curry you just knew that it had gone missing, did it? A box with a microwave in that says Swan microwave on it and it's just gone missing. No, thank you. Anyway, we've ended up having a sharp one. Now, this one, it's come, it's, it, we used it tonight for the first time. It's one of them with like loads of functions on the front that makes it look really, really complicated when all you really need to do is go, dit, 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 done. That's it. But it's got functions on there for cooking popcorn. And one of the ones that really made me cringe, it's got a function on there, a button for actually rewarming tea and coffee. Now, if you've ever had reheated tea in a microwave, it is disgusting it is vile you cannot reheat cups of tea in the microwave they do not taste right under no stretch do they they usually end up with a skin on top of them and all that you have to take off in order to drink the drink which makes it even more disgusting now i've not tried warmer coffee up in there but i have a tea and they do not work trust me tea is best drunk hot straight from the kettle job done let a bit of milk whatever and yeah do not let it go cold and then reheat it in the microwave. It is vile. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to disappear because I've done another 25-minute vlog. I can't believe that. Talk me those off again. Um, you all take care, and hopefully next time I'll have more to show you, and also I won't be as ill. You all take care. Bye for now, and thanks for watching.